Hello, hello, and thanks for stopping by. This is Alien Breed 92 Special Edition for the Commodore Amiga, made by Team 17 and released in 1992. I'm playing this game on an A500 mini console, which is a console released by RetroGames.biz. This is the same creator of the C64 mini and full-size systems. I'm a fan of these consoles. Anyway, the special edition here apparently has more levels when compared to the original release. It also has a new dark game mode, and it also gives you the ability to enter codes to jump to specific levels, which is excellent. The A500 console does have a save state mode, which is great and all, but being able to get to any sort of a specific level is fantastic. I can't imagine how hard this game would have been without having a level code in it. So Alien Breed was a series of games that started back in the 90s, and at the time those games were mostly being released for the Commodore Amiga. As of today, there have been a total of 10 games in this series. The last one was released in 2010, and it was for Windows, PS3, and the Xbox 360. I think on their virtual stores, no hard copies that I'm aware of. I'm new to this series, and I really didn't know what to expect before I loaded the game. I was really surprised to see that Alien Breed is basically the game Gauntlet, but with a different setting, and certainly some additional complexities. I'm a huge fan of Gauntlet, so this one was great to check out. This is a science fiction top-down shooter where you're going to navigate through levels on a space station trying to survive an alien infestation. At its most basic, it's you running through a maze shooting aliens, but there are levels that have missions, like blowing up generators, or just making it to the exit before the level explodes, triggering blast doors to close, stuff like that. I think having these occasional goals on different levels is a really interesting mechanic, because it kind of makes you think about the level in a different way. You have to scout certain levels before you start triggering things. You might need to know exactly how to escape a maze, and possibly how to not ruin your path to that exit. I think in this regard it really makes you think more than, more than expected for sure. There is a rough plot to this one. There's a story in the manual, a little thing about the galaxy and what, what's going on, but the truth, this all boils down to, you're a soldier, you're in a space station that stopped communicating and they want to know why, you show up and, well, aliens. So, go get a gun. I think this one handles decent enough for this style of game. The A500 controller is passable, and you seem to be able to run at a reasonable speed here. You're a little bigger on screen compared to the standard gauntlet type of a game, and as a result, I think it makes this one feel more claustrophobic. You just can't see far into adjoining rooms. Usually for games like this, you're using this visual information to try to understand the maze you're in, and where you need to go next, or maybe what doors you should open. But you don't get that much visual information here, so you're going to have to start memorizing levels. Just like Gauntlet, you're going to have to worry about your health. Of course, don't get hit by aliens as best you can. But throughout the level, you're also going to pick up medical kits which help, and of course you're going to find money and keys. You really need to worry about keys in this game. There are going to be tons of doors to open just to get around. But if you run out of keys, you might find yourself stuck. Using three keys just to get to one key in a room is probably not a very good value. Key management becomes a skill you have to develop in this one, or you're going to waste a ton of your money just buying keys because you're opening doors incorrectly. You can also trap yourself in a level like this. I trapped myself on the first level I played, actually. I was within one key. I had the key at one point, but I walked too close to a particular door, and I wasted the key opening that door. So, be careful walking around. Now, unlike Gauntlet, you have to worry about ammunition in this one. If you run out of ammunition, you're going to get yourself stuck. This is a bigger problem, considering that when you lose a life, you don't start with more ammunition. So pay attention here, and try to conserve. Another thing that's different than Gauntlet is that the enemies don't have spawn points that you can destroy in this game. I was wandering around the first level wiping out aliens left and right, looking for spawn points to destroy. They don't seem to exist in this game. The aliens just keep coming. It affects how you run a level, because you're always going to be in danger of an alien jumping in front of you. When you hit the second level, you're also going to find the, the levels are changing. There are going to be holes in the floor where aliens are appearing, so at least you know where they're going to spawn. But you can't shoot and destroy the holes. Other levels might have tunnels that open and close. The game loves to feed you more aliens. 
Now you also pick up money as you wander around. You use this at the different terminals to buy things like health and such. Now finding the terminals maybe isn't as easy as you'd like. Personally, I was looking for something bright and possibly glowing, but I couldn't find anything like that. Then after a while I was staring at the map, and I found a little computer monitor on a wall. Okay, that's where you access the menu. If it looks like a computer, that's probably it. If you find one, you can buy different weapons, ammunition, a radar scan of the level, and keys. I was actually pretty happy to see so many options available. It definitely gives you something to save up for. And also, you can't underestimate the value of a good map preview. Maybe the first two or three levels, knowing the exact layout of the map, might not be such a big deal. But eventually, the mazes can get complex. Now, as far as guns go, they actually have a pretty solid variety here. You're going to need to save up to buy them, of course, but when you do get them, they pack a punch. Also, you're not just replacing a weapon. You can switch between your weapons on the fly. This is excellent. When you finish a level, you get a brief wrap-up of what just happened, and you get the rough assignment for the next one. Like, it might tell you you need to close blast doors or blow up generators. You're also given a code, and it, this is what you use to load the game back to that level. You want to write these down. By the time I hit the fourth level, I realized that the stages were still evolving. The alien sprites actually changed, and another type of an alien appeared. Facehuggers. You also need to be careful to not fall down holes that open. It's just another obstacle to overcome. Overall, this is a pretty fun game. It doesn't have hundreds of levels to traverse like in Gauntlet, but it's got plenty of missions, and the mazes that you have to figure out how to get through, they're actually pretty complex sometimes. This one is really about memorizing these different paths, I think, and some of these take your brain a while to get around. This one's decent, it really is. So far, it also seems to be one of the better games on the A500 console. Well, that's all I have today for Alien Breed 92 Special Edition. If this is your type of video, please feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, and thanks for stopping by to take a look. I hope to catch you on another video.